y'all please stand the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear Is our 
God. Let us all say amen. And if you love him, let's give him a hand of praises. He's a great God. He's an awesome God. He's a loving God. Praise be unto you, God. Amen. You may be seated. We come today not only to worship and exalt our great God, but we are here to celebrate the beautiful life of Mr. Cecil Morris, a man of beloved, a man of uh, unusual gifts, and we come to celebrate his life and all of the precious memories that we have. The family is out on a beautiful lot of worship, and we are opening a selection, Lord, I'm coming home, followed by the Lord's Prayer, Scripture, Old Testament, Ecclesiastes. Then there'll be another musical selection of Mr. Andre singing Amazing Grace and Reflection Time. And I'm sure all of us, we had the chance, would have something to say. But the family's outlined three persons to say a word about as a father, Mr. Paul Morris, as a brother, uh, Ellen Rene Robbins, an uncle, Richard Carnicki, another poem, a saxophone selection from uh, Mora Artinuk, and then reflections, two minutes by family and friends. Amen. Amen. At this time, the Lord, I'm coming home. for being a great God. Lord, we know that you are comforting God. You know what to do and how to do. You know everybody present. You know our needs. And we call on you now, Lord, to be merciful, to be our blessed Savior and comforting us in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, we ask your blessings upon this celebration. We ask you to guide. We ask you to sustain. In the name of Jesus Christ. You taught us how to pray a prayer. The Lord's Prayer. We ask everyone to join in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And our scripture comes from the book of Ecclesiastes. Amen. I'll be reading the first 11 verses. About a time for everything. To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit has he hath worked in that wherein ye labor? I have seen the travail which God has given the sons of men to be exercised in it. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Amen. 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 Another selection from Mr. Andre, Amazing Grace. Thank God for grace. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Amazing grace. That one. The Lord, when we 
do some talking and reflecting as a father, dad, and nobody can do it like Brother Paul, Brother Paul Morris, followed by as a brother and followed as, as an uncle. Cecil was a wonderful person, as all of us here come to show love and a great send-off. Not mourning, but celebrating the love this man showed us. We're all here in the love of my father, Cecil answered Morris. In bad son, love you all. Amen. Somewhat suddenly. 
one day after my birthday, even though there were little warning signs along the way. Having survived open heart surgery and other subsequent health challenges, he succumbed to what seemed to be a massive heart attack or stroke. Cecil Morris, affectionately called Brother Cecil by all his siblings, was the only boy of nine sisters, two of whom predeceased him. Growing up in the country of Jamaica, he was somewhat mis a mischievous child who loved to play tricks on his siblings and found it quite intriguing and funny when they hollered and screamed. He quickly abandoned that behavior as all parents would not tolerate such conduct. At an early age, it was evident that Brother Cecil was blessed with a God-given talent to build not only houses, but practically anything he puts his mind to do. Consequently, that propelled him to qualify himself as a builder contractor a skill he developed into a lifelong career. As a young man, Brother Cecil established himself as a family man and was married to his lifelong partner, Ruby Morris, we call her his name. Yes, a partnership which produced four beautiful kids. I have fun memories spending summer holidays with them when they were residing in Kingston, Jamaica. Brother Cecil will always be remembered as a dedicated husband, a father, an exceptional hard worker who worked assiduously for the well-being of his wife and kids. Despite his somewhat busy schedule, he was always present at family gatherings and events. There is no doubt that he will be sadly missed by his wife, kids, grandkids, siblings, other relatives, friends, and associates. May he rest in peace. Values 
his calm demeanor, his energy that allows us to gravitate towards him. My uncle had a very, a great work ethic. For as long as I can remember my entire life, he's been a carpenter, a very physically demanded career. And he did it right up until the end. He never retired. He didn't want to retire. I used to ask him all the time, Oh, when are you going to retire? When are you going? <laughs> never. In his 70s, right up until his 80s, until he became ill, he didn't want to retire. And I never understood why. I, I, I'm curious. I always wonder what was his motivation. And I don't know, but I think it's his strength of character his values, his commitment to his craft, but most importantly, his commitment to family. It's hard to stand here and summarize the impact he had on my life. But when I, if I had to put it in words, the adjective I would think of is consistency, hardworking, loyal, committed, committed to family. My uncle's been married to my aunt for over 60 years. Now that's commitment, y'all. <laughs> So today we say goodbye. We say goodbye to Cecil Morris, my uncle, who I will miss dearly. But as Paul mentioned, now is the time to celebrate. To celebrate a life fully lived and to reflect on his journey and the impact that it had on our lives. I miss my uncle and the time we spent together but I always remember him for his work ethic, his loyalty, his commitment to family, his creativity, and the joy that he brought to my life and to my family. Amen. Thank you so much. Wasn't that beautiful? Yes. Amen. Amen. At this time, we have a poem from Daddy's Girl. Mm-hmm. 
Continuing our reflections over the beautiful life and the wonderful legacy of Mr. Cecil. And the family is opening it up for uh, persons to uh, family and friends who are like limited to two minutes uh, reflecting over Mr. Cecil. You could do that if, as stat where you are, or you could come at one of the, either mic.
don't I don't know him to be a person to make a lot of mistakes. He always seems to have it together. He's always seems to have it together. together. Whether it be him playing the old school A track player in the house, loving <laughs> us with extra cash up in the plate, and just need a little bit of extra allowance for us. Uh, he's always been uh, stern but soft spoken at the same time. It's a very uh, immaculate um, way to be that mixture of all. Always been a hard working man. He's always been creative. I remember going in his, his room, he had his blueprints, how he used to build the homes. He's always been a man to try to bring along all of the other men and give them work in the short time to do things. So if they bring it down to work with to work on things, I have to you know, pull up in the candy yellow truck to give me a go get McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? So um, grandpa's a great man. Um, and I'm happy to know that he's always been holding down. And then here, then on mix up, as grandma say at night, he's never no mix up and I don't want to hear the floor. So, <laughs> 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 right. so I'm happy to know that he's always
at this time, we'll have an obituary reading from Mrs. Jennifer Mincy. and Evelyn William Morris. He was the second of 10 children of his mother, the only boy in a sea of girls. Cecil received his formal education at Kendall Primary and Middlesex schools in Jamaica, and later he entered into a carpenter apprenticeship with his father at the Strathbogie Westmoreland area. Cecil's father, Evelyn William Morris, his grandfather, John Adolphus Morris Jr., and his great-grandfather, John Adolphus Morris Sr., were all carpenters. Cecil continued this legacy. Upon completion of his apprenticeship, Cecil worked as a carpenter in Montego Bay and the Kingston area. While living in Kingston, he met his wife. He met and married his wife, Ruby McCarthy. The couple worked hard and prospered, purchasing their first home in their mid-twenties. And Cecil always promised his new wife that he would not have any children until he owned his own home. The small quaint board house was located on Whitfield Avenue, Kingston 13, Jamaica, where the couple raised their two children, Paul and Paula. To take advantage of opportunities abroad, they migrated to the United States, first Ruby in 1967, leaving Ce uh, Cecil and her two young children behind. They finally Cecil to start a new life in Chicago, Illinois. Cecil continued to work as a carpenter in Chicago and Miami. And during this time, the couple had two more children, Peter and Pamela. father to his own children, 
and a surrogate father to many others who cross his path. Cecil leaves to cherish precious memories, his wife Ruby Morris, children, two sons, Paul and Peter, two daughters, Paula and Pamela, grandchildren, Paul Morris Jr., Lamar Morris, Omar Morris, Jamar Morris, Shamika Morris, Miles Alternate, Tori Kemp, Peyton Wright, Layla Wright, Alea Morris, great grandchildren, Adonis Morris, Malaysia, what's your name? Corey Moana, <coughs> Ryan, Ryland Autonaut, Liam Autonaut, Gianni Autonaut, Azaria Kemp, um, Azriel, Azriel. <laughs> Azriel Kemp, and siblings, Lena Williams, Loris Robinson, Albina Langley, Dorothy Robinson, Ellering Jameson, Jasmine Hazel, and Sharon Robinson. May his soul rest in peace. And Ramar Morris, I'm sorry, he was on here. Let the church say amen. Yeah. Amen. To God be the glory and for his wonderful grace and, and his mercy. I'd like to share a passage of scripture from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, verses um, 6 and 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due season casting all your cares upon him and he for he careth for you hope you leave a thought in there about gifted hands gifted hands the other day i uh, saw a gentleman without hands legs uh, arms in fact no arms no hands no legs and it stunned, and it, 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 it stunned me to, to know that in life it's a blessing to have all of our parts, but particularly our hands. Thank God for hands. Amen? Amen. Could you look at your hands, if you don't, just for a minute? I mean, they are precious. They are a gift from God. Thank God for hands. Can you imagine? living without hands. Uh, imagine trying to dress without hands. Imagine trying to eat uh, a hug or doing a number of things that we do daily with our hands and we, yet we didn't have any hands. God has blessed us with an unusual blessing of having hands and we come to celebrate the life and legacy of, of, uh, of uh, Mr. Mr. Cecil who was gifted with unusual, gifted, talented hands. Amen? Amen. Amen. I mean, just an amazing thing. And a hand is such an awesome gift from God. A hand has 27 bones, 12 joints, 4 fingers, and 1 thumb. Hands. And thank God for, for Mr. Cecil, who God put in his own amazing grace with his the awesome hands of God gave unto uh, Mr. Cecil gifted hands. And he was an extraordinary, ordinary yet extraordinary man with gifted hands and, and, and it's a blessing to know that he had all the qualities that you have said uh, in remarks that you made earlier. I mean, a strong man, uh, easygoing, enjoyable, hardworking person, man. Uh, and that is amazing. Down to earth gentleman tried his best to be the best Cecil he could be. And that's all we can be. Being the person whom God has made us to be. A kind and gentle man who was a real gentleman 
as it has been said all through this service, he was a true gentleman who loved challenges. He was friendly, and if you had Mr. Cecil as your friend, you had a, the best friend that you could have. Amen? Amen. He was not materialistic, but he enjoyed helping others and would find a time to encourage and do things for other people. Amen. He was a terrific businessman, a man who knew how to handle his business. Amen? Use his hand to make a living, a, a proud living for himself and for his family. Hands, hands, hands. Mr. Caesar was a man with gifted hands, with talented hands. I mean, he could do all kind of things with his hands. Uh, unlike many of us, I could just do so many things with my hand, but he could do any number of extraordinary things with his hands. Amen? An extremely skilled carpenter, well-known master carpenter, and he maintained a long and rich history and legacy with the tradition of a carpentry in his family, master carpenter, as that was read earlier. I mean, his father was a carpenter. His grandfather was a carpenter. And his father was a carpenter. Amen? Amen. I mean, blessed with the talent of carpentry. And, and, and of course, he, would, he, would, uh, he, he, was such a, he was such a talented, Carpenter with a rich tradition, uh, he, 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 but his tradition goes even back to the time of Jesus. Jesus Christ himself was a carpenter, and his father was a carpenter. Amen. Now I wondered while the service going on, how many are how many the legacy to continue, how many in in the building uh will carry on that tradition. Any of the grandsons, granddaughters who plan to be carpenters? Are you a carpenter? Any any more carpenters in the building? <laughs> Maybe they're on the way. <laughs> oh <are> they <laughs> Oh but not like him. All right, all right. What a master craftsman. I mean, he was so good, people sought him out, particularly due to hard work. As I heard two people mention that when they worked on their basements, they had to call him in to rescue the day. Amen? A talented man who built many beautiful, extraordinary houses and buildings. Uh, I mean, he was just talented. He was talented to, and skillful, a skillful gardener. Uh, he did a lot of planting of plants, vegetables, herbs, flowers, shrubs. And as one lady mentioned this morning, I mean, he was, he was, a, he was a master at having the best looking yard uh, on the block or in the community. Amen? Just a gifted a man with Blessed, wonderful hands. But not only talented hands, but he had loving hands. He loved his wife and his children. Let's give God a hand for that. Amen. He loved Miss Ruby. Amen. She still has stars in her eyes. I can see them. Married Miss Ruby, a faithful and dedicated couple for 63 years. Isn't that amazing? Amen. 63 years. I mean, he made sure that Miss Ruby didn't want for anything. I mean, Mr. 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 Cecil and Miss Ruby were just made for each other. Amen. Just like uh, Beyonce and Jay-Z. <laughs> Olive oil and Popeye. They were made for each other. Amen. Amen. He's crazy about his children and his grandchildren. I know he was so proud to, to see so many saying some wonderful things as they did with the son and the grandson. Not only did he have uh, uh, talented hands and uh, wonderful hands, but he had helping hands. Uh, as the gentleman just stood and said he was like a surrogate father. He had enough love to be the father of others. Isn't that good? 
I mean, he had that loving, caring, tenderless, tender way of making the fathers feel like they had a father in him. Amen. A, a beautiful gifted hand. Beautiful gifted hand. Find, find that praying hand. Amen. Praying hand. Mr. Caesar had his share of ups and downs. Like life will toss it to all of us. I mean, life for Mr. Caesar was not always a, a crystal stair. He had his good days and he had his bad days. But like Peter in this passage, he had enough strength to fold his hands and to look toward God for his strength and his help. Amen. Amen. Praying hands. And you know, I pray that we all learn from him and from Peter in this passage to have praying hands because life gets rough. Life gets tough. And we need a hand, hands to hold on to in moments that we're going through now. And, and as the passage says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God for he cares for you, casting all your cares upon him and God has the strongest of hands God has enduring hands it is nothing like putting our hands in the hands of God who can do all things amen, amen. and he, I, there's a hymn that says he got the whole world in his hands he got you and me brother in his hands he has you and me sister in his hands he got the whole world in his hands. Amen. Amen. Can we sing that together? He got the whole world in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He got the whole he has the wind and the rain. He has the wind and the rain. In his hand, he has the wind and the rain. In his hands, he's got the wind and the rain. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hand. He has you and me. He has you and me. In his hand, he's got you and me. In his hand, he's got you and me. In his hand, he got the whole world in his hand. He has everybody here. He's got everybody here. In his hand, he's got everybody here yes he has in his oh he's got everybody in his hand he's got the whole world in his hand let's give God a hand for being a good God Amen. that's right let's give God a hand clap for yes, let's give God a hand clap for I don't see everybody clap I just said, give me a hand clap of praise. I said, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Yeah. We came in here to celebrate his life. Yeah. We didn't come in to mourn his life. Yes. We came in to celebrate his life. Yes, sir. First, give honor to God and to you, Pastor, the family. Have to say thank you for all your consoling words. What you have said to console this family, the family is simply saying thank you. To the many friends who gather the family, also acknowledge you. They appreciate for you coming, sharing, and the pastor of one. Whatever you don't call flower, just simply said a prayer. Your presence here means so much to this family. And for that, this family, thank you. To this family, on behalf of myself and staff, we take this time and knowledge through our appreciation for you chose me your funeral counselor during your hour of bereavement. And in doing so, we prayed to Maury Platt for it to keep you the one until you meet him again. Can we all, oh, you want to sing? All right. Can we all please stand?
Fly away when I 